Yeah, and we got a transmutation too at the very end. That transmutation was pretty hilarious in the uh, the final bits. All right, a difficult, difficult um, prospect before us. Slime boss as silent is always a little bit scary. I see that we're given choose a card, 100 gold, or a curse for 12 max HP. With all of the stores in the act being in the first five floors, I really like the idea of taking money as our starting bonus here. Theoretically, we could fight three elites, but it's a pretty suicidal path. I wonder if we take the opportunity to do battle with the burning elite. Hmm. It's a lot of event spaces back here. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Though I do do like late events. You know, one thing that I don't talk about very often with regards to how I prioritize path, uh, pathing in Act 1, uh, I tend to stress very strongly that you should be taking a lot of combats early on. This is so that you can get your potion slots filled up, get your deck um, flashed out a little bit in order to be able to do battle with the elites of Act 1. But it's also because the event pool of Act 1 is different based on the floor that you're on. And starting on floor seven, there are a couple of new events that get added. The Dead Adventure, the Three Mushroom Combat, might be one or two others, um, that can only appear in later floors and are very rewarding if you're in shape to be able to take them on. Parker, thank you so much for the six months, the whole half year. Duany asks, what's do the burning fights change? This particular elite holds the green key. We need to fight this elite in one of the three acts in order to get to act four. This fight is empowered with a buff of some kind. Uh, it's random of four, either plus strength for the enemy, plus max health for the enemy, 25%. Um, additional metallicize or additional regen and the numerical value of those buffs scales depending on what act you're in it's also applied to each enemy in the combat so the burning elite is particularly scary when it occurs on a multi-enemy fight like the slavers of act two or the centuries of act one You need to do this eventually, so I tend, and because of the numerical buff scale, I tend to prefer taking out the Empowered Elite earlier when possible, because the buffs are comparatively minor. Now, early Act 1 events mostly, mostly in a position to do damage to you. There are healing ones, but you won't be able to benefit from the healing ones if your health is full. Plus Strength Book of Stabbing is very spooky. I'm also, a uh, shout out to absolutely murdering us is uh, Max Health Book of Stabbing as well, since the fight is essentially a big timer. If you extend that timer by 25%, or shorten it, kind of, whatever, you know, right? Like, you, you make the task more difficult to achieve. Um, you t make it take 25% longer to do what you need to do, you're gonna die big time, because um, it doesn't matter how well you were blocking previously, when that seven times nine turn shows up, you're gonna be dead. The rotating streak is nine, how come all the other streaks don't add up to nine? Uh, this streak started when I ran it back on Ironclad, so I lost the Ironclad streak resetting our rotating and ironclad streaks, and then played another ironclad run immediately. I did go through the, the if you want to see the exact situation, uh, you can, we went through the run history uh, a few minutes ago, so you can roll back the VOD and uh, take a look at the run history there. All right, I'm taking this 100 gold. The question then is, do I go to this store or this store? If I go to this store, then I'll probably opt for this fire and this elite fight and then this elite fight two elites with no fire in between or we take four combats in a row gear up at the shop with um an average of 260 gold from four combats we'll know if we got potions or not so we can fill up our potion slots or reassign potions going into this elite and we can always opt out if something really bad happened and then just like fight one elite here or something. I think that's very likely to work out. So I like this path the most. We avoid all the events for now. And we'll end up at the store with a pretty penny in our pockets. 
I'm hoping also two copies of Backstab or something like that. Alright, just kill you. Just kill you. Kill the lice! Okay, a Cultist Potion. That's an interesting find. That makes Lagavulin a lot less threatening, potentially. Ooh. Masterful Stab versus Dagger Spray. What a choice. What a choice. Dagger Spray is very reasonably good. It, it, it scales twice with this potion that we have, which is going to make it uh, very valuable in whatever the first Elite Fight is. But Masterful Stab is 12 damage for zero cost. That's like a backstab. It's even reusable, uh, particularly against Slime Boss. It's reusable. Masterful Stab often becomes a curse by the end of the game, but the benefit is that it's so powerful in the early game that it really, really helps. They're both quite good. I like the stab because I don't feel like I need to upgrade it like I do for the dagger spray. I think I'm going to take this masterful stab. I think that's going to be a really excellent card in the short term. It's also going to make this Chowworm fight a lot easier for us. In a way that the dagger spray wouldn't. though. So ultimately call that a very, very good Jowworm fight. Happy to see another potion here. We're offered a Bouncing Flask for Poison or a Blade Dance to add three shivs. Given that we're fighting the Slime Boss, I think we're disincentivized from taking a Bouncing Flask, and Blade Dance is very excellent damage these days since the buff. I think I will happily take a Blade Dance. Man, we could have taken the Accuracy on Floor 1. I didn't even talk about Accuracy because um, adding the Accuracy to the starting deck I don't think is a very good idea, but it would have paid off instantly with this Blade Dance. Just saying. Just saying. The buff. Yeah, so Blade Dance, I guess it was almost a year ago now. Uh, this card used to add two shivs to your hand. Three when upgraded. Now it's three, four when upgraded. Uh, making it a very, very, very powerful damage option for the Silent. Please don't weaken me. Thank you. If you take one, you gotta take them all. Well, if that's the law, officer. You both deal 12. I play one block. I don't think there's any reason to not full block there. Okay, we've kept quite a bit of our health. We get a strength potion, hand backstab, or a second blade dance. Are you kidding me? Skewer is even reasonable too. All three very powerful damage options. Uh, I guess I'm going to go strength potion, cultist potion. And that will surely kill a Burning Elite, no matter what it is. Dead Branch incoming, please. I'm going to be in the store, though, and I won't be able to afford it. No, I'm hoping, personally, Sling of Courage incoming. Double Bleed Dance. That's a hell of an early commitment. Let's do it. Food incoming. Please. I would do anything for a boot right now. Even some very dark things. Four potions in a row. Are we at 0% potion chance now? Is that what that... <laughs> and an infinite blades, man, that accuracy would have been so good. You know, with these potions, this riddle with holes is actually kind of out of control. Infinite blades. 
I feel like I want infinite blades when I have two blade dances. Do I need this rule with holes? I don't think that I do. I think we're actually good as we are, keeping the deck on the relatively small side. We just want to get these cards upgraded. And remove some stuff. Might even opt for removing a defense initially um, for this deck against Slime Boss. Yeah, not only is it hard to justify taking a card just because of potions, I think it's hard to justify when I already have cards that essentially do the same thing, but do it better. Because they're cheaper. I can't believe we got four potions in a row. I have no idea what to say to this, chat. This run is already out of control. Now that we have two blade dances, accuracy is absurd. If we want to get even more absurd, there's Cloak and Nagger as well. Malaise is a rare card. Uh, I mean, of course, there's also a membership card. Which does decrease our purchasing power here, leaving us with only about 200 gold to spend. But it's still enough for accuracy of less remove or for malaise. Which is pretty potent, although not against Slime Boss. Zero cost Swift Strike also contributing pretty decently here. But I think this, uh... I think this has got to personally be membership card, accuracy, remove a defend. And then we upgrade... Possibly the accuracy? Maybe one of the blade dances. In case we bottom deck the accuracy. But yeah, it's it's almost impossible to say no to a first first shop uh, membership card. And I've struggled to think of what I would do with the money otherwise. I don't I don't see any purchasing lines that are available um that would be worth it. Like we can't go accuracy card remove malaise, for example. Another option is membership card meal ticket. Meal ticket is a pretty generous heal when we go to a shop. And we're gonna be visiting a lot of shops, but man, do we want this we really need this accuracy. Uh, and we can't afford accuracy and meal tickets, so it's just going to be accuracy defend remove for me. Likewise, Oracalcum, I think is quite good, but does not does not cooperate with these options. Okay, and we can't afford anything else here with our remaining twenty one gold, and that's completely fine. Let's upgrade. I think one of the blade dances, not one, not the accuracy. Just upgrade one of the blade dances, so that we, we get one more shiv plus our strength bonus, and probably upgrade the accuracy next. Upgrading the blade dance first, because in the event that we bottom deck accuracy against, say, very angry knob, we want to make sure we're still doing damage with our blade dances. Get metallicized sentries. Well, this fight's gonna go on for days. Can I lay right on the defend remove with these two strength potions? Uh, it's mostly because of slime boss, ultimately, but the idea is that we're preserving a little bit of our offensive power, and that is partially enhanced with these strength potions. Um, but just in general, in the slime boss fight, you need more damage more than you need block. And given that I am sufficiently worried about the slime boss fight, I would like to, I would like to have more attacks in the deck for that fight. Speaking of, given that our potion chance is now very, very low, we're not likely to replenish our potions particularly quickly here. So I'm thinking I can probably use one potion in this fight. We might get a, a replacement potion, but we might not. Um, and then I'll probably have one potion for Slime Boss. And if there's any potion that's going to save me against Slime Boss, it's going to be a Cultist Potion, giving strength each and every turn. So I'm going to opt to use the Strength Potion here. We get damage immediately, which is what we want to be able to burst one of the sentries down. Notably drawing that upgraded Blade Dance on turn one feels good. Let's do this. Four shivs. It's 24. 
plus 16 is exactly 40, so it can actually perfectly kill the middle one here, which is interesting. Prevents Masterful Stab from costing more, although I'm likely to take a lot of damage next turn by killing the middle one first here. Um, I think that works out in our favor. You're right, 16, 24, yes. Let's, let's kill this one. If I could kill either the front or back one with this exactly 40 damage, then I would, but because the middle one has also rolled the lowest health here and it leads to exactly killing, I'm going to opt to do this. Not how I usually handle the sentries fight, but I think it'll work out here. Okay, there's accuracy in the other blade dance. How much damage is this? 10, 10, 10, 8, not a kill. So we will take 15, kill one of them next turn. take five or ten more after that, probably. Or none more, because Blade Dance does that much damage. Wow. All right, that worked out really, really well. We only took 15 damage, and we beat our Burning Elite with one potion expended. Ceramic Fish is actually insane here. Nine gold whenever we add a card to the deck, and that is effectively being doubled because we have a 50% discount on everything. So imagine in your mind, 18 gold per card. Add to that a dash to let us handle act one with confidence, blocking for 10 and dealing 10 damage at the same time. Also a very reasonable escape plan, kind of like takes up no space of the deck, um, but gives us 18 gold. I would add Literally infinite escape plans to this deck. Maybe that's not quite correct. That would be a really bad idea to add infinite. But would it, though? Would it, though? I think it would take too long to play, mainly. But yeah, I'm going to take that... Uh, I'm going to take the dash, because the dash has raw numerical output on its side in a way that will really help me deal with this stuff. Let's take it. Probably going to pay off instantly here on turn one. Hmm. Dash Defend or Dash Blade Dance? Probably worth it to take the two here to deal 16 damage. I need to kill the backslime quickly, uh, or this fight will get out of control. That said, Masterful Stab is a reason to full block. You beat the heart with an infinite escape plan deck. Yes, probably. Especially if that run also has infinite money, which is the the idea there. But just just an infinite number of escape plans, you could probably probably make that work. You'd only need one or two, um, like one upgraded after image in the infinite escape plans, or a couple of relics to go with. Hey there, Zizi. All right, yeah, I'll choose to take the. Even if this prevents me from playing uh, Masterful Stab. Masterful Stab does less than 16 damage, right? So I'll just take two. And I'll opt not to take one more, because I will be playing Masterful Stab. Accuracy, Blade Dance, Masterful Stab, Neutralize, next turn. Nice turn to get the, deep, uh, the buff, since... We're not drawing any block. We get a potion. It's not a particularly great potion, but it's just fine. And I'm definitely tempted by an all-out attack, because that hits all enemies, and we are fighting Slime Boss. Although we're, we're very close to being just, like, extra good against Slime Boss. And again, 18 gold, so definitely an incentive to just add more cards. So we have three different ways we can go from here to get an additional elite and two rest sites. Question of how many events versus combats. I think given that we've seen five combats already, 
deck is pretty well developed at this point. Mostly want more upgrades, want removals, and we want extra bonus, very difficult combats. So I'll take the events and we'll opt for the upgrade first. Hey, upgrade two random attacks. Please upgrade my all out attack for me. Thanks. Easy every time. All right, well now I definitely want bonus difficult combats. That was a really, really high roll. Fancy Skink asks, do hard combats give higher rewards? No, no they don't. Um, certain event uh, combats that you find in event rooms can give bonus rewards. Um, the ones that are attached to particular events like the three mushroom combat. But in general, the hard pool versus easy pool, there's no difference in reward at all. They, they always, uh, a combat always gives you between 10, to, 10 and 20 gold. Uh, a chance for a potion, depending on whether you've seen potions or not in previous combats, the potion chance changes, and uh, a card reward containing three cards. Likewise, the chance for different rarities of cards depends on previous rewards. Uh, Gold-wise, an elite gives between 25 and 35? Yes, 25 and 35 is the range. Um, so elite, uh, regular combats are average 15 gold, elite combats are average 30 gold. You can think of an elite as twice as much money as a regular combat, although that's not strictly true. Plus a higher rarity, plus 5% to see rare cards, chance for, uh, for rares in the three cards that are dropped, and of course, of course, of course, a relic, which is the thing we're always lusting after. But don't be fooled into thinking the relic is the only reward, because the, the rare card and the money are huge too. All right, definitely upgrading this accuracy here, and we'll probably upgrade the next, uh, the blade, the other blade dance next. There's a card reward for us, or sorry, card removal for us. I think we do take out strikes now, but also destroy to gain gold. And with double money from membership card, we can think of this as 100 to 160 gold, which is uh, potentially enough for a relic at a shop. That is pretty good, and doesn't cost me seven health. Hmm. That's actually cool. A, a situation where it's a valid choice to take either option here. That said, that removal is going to start saving me health immediately. And we don't have a shop this act. And I'm going to be spending money on removals anyway. But Ceramic Fish Pandora's Box, what if? I think I'd be completely fine with an 8-card transform. I think the damage here. Who's a strike? And there's the mushrooms I've been talking about. You enter a corridor full of hypnotizing colored mushrooms. Due to your lack of specialization in mycology, you are unable to identify the specimens. You want to escape, but feel oddly compelled to eat a mushroom. You can fight the mushrooms. It's three mushroom enemies, which is a very difficult fight. Um, but quite manageable if your damage output is sufficient. And oh boy, do we have sufficient damage output for this fight. Or take a heal in exchange for a Parasite Curse. This is one of the events I was talking about where you get bonus rewards. This fight drops more money than usual. I think somewhere between a regular combat and an elite. We'll have to take a look at that when, it, uh, when the fight's over. And also gives you the odd mushroom relic, which makes you take less additional damage when vulnerable. Lastly, but not leastly, we have an ancient potion here, which can really help us out in this fight. I'm stomping. And we drew dash all at attack turn one. You'll love to see it. Well, that's exactly 27 damage. And blocks for enough that it doesn't matter that we're vulnerable this turn, although it might matter next turn. Ancient Pot's also reasonable against Slime Boss. Let's see, so we do, you'll be at 10, you'll be at 12. It's very reasonable to kill them both. Oh, 
Or just to kill this one in full block. That works too. Twenty-six gold is what we got. I think the what does the spreadsheet say for this event? Is it twenty to thirty? I swear it's less than an elite. Well, that'll be under events. This is what's it called? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Yes, 20 to 30 gold, so an average of 25 from this combat. Five less than an elite, for some reason. That card says Shiv on it. I mean, there's also a Fumes here. Do I want a Cloak and Dagger? Gives us another plus Shiv upgrade. Helps our block density a little bit. Yeah, it's an alright card with an alright upgrade. After I upgrade the Blade Dance, we're down to like, Neutralize is my best upgrade, or Survivor is my best upgrade. So it, it does reason to stand we should add more plus Shiv upgrades. And as ever, 18 gold at our next shop. And the Sagany almost fits as well. Just kind of throw it out, but it's less, it's less damage efficiency than most of our other cards. So I'm taking the fish. I'm taking the card for fish, rather. Okay, accuracy turn one against the Lagavulin. Good. I think I'll still save this for Slime Boost. Contemplated playing um, the Cloak and Dagger just to put a Shiv into the deck there. Opted not to, ultimately. So really, we're almost guaranteed to draw a dash next turn. I think I'm going to start now. And obviously play Blade Dance, because this does like 40 damage. Literally 40 damage. So if we draw it again, we kill. No dice, huh? Ouch. Four damage short. Dang. Take ten. Okay, like a villain was rude, but we get a potion bell. That's nice. And going into Act 2, given that we're pretty confident against the slime boss, I am very happy to take a Piercing Whale. Probably one of Silent's best block cards. Uh, definitely her best block common. Reducing all enemies' strength for one turn is heckin' potent. And what have we got here? Banana gaming? The opposite of banana gaming. Scrap ooze. Click up to two times, trying to get a relic out of this. But will there be one? Do not think I am willing to trust this. The real question is, do I go into Slime Boss? I think I will use the the potion, which means I should probably upgrade a card. Upgrade the Blade Dance, and we can probably avoid having to deal with the slime boss at all. But I don't think I'm going to click any number of times, because with anything less than 12 health, I feel even less good about upgrading. Of course, there's a mango one click in, right? No. I'm just going to leave. Zero clicks is how I'm feeling today. And then upgrade the Blade Dance. No rest before Slime Boss. If we don't manage to split, then it really doesn't matter whether I have 12 health or 31 health. Slime Boss will kill us in one hit. And with the one strength per turn of the Cultist Potion, I think we'll be all right. Unfortunately, drawing both Blade Dances here at the same time is not what I had in mind. Minus 11 goes to 86. Get very close to splitting here. I think I'm going to play this Blade Dance and just let a bunch of shivs go to the, uh, go to the deck here. 
Or, hold on, what if I just play Blade Dance Strike? How much damage is that? It's like a 30 health split. Yeah, I think we actually just keep going. This is 44 damage, right? Yeah, 35 health, that should be fine. Although stalling for more uh, Cultist Potion turns could have been a pretty good thing. Got 14 plus 12 plus 5. Not quite a KO, unfortunately. I think I want to block that and split this one. The big slime's guaranteed to attack me next turn. We can block this. Go here. See, that'll be that'll be guaranteed nine. I think I can neutralize here and full block. If it doesn't kill, there's not a whole lot of point. Okay. Hey, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Got lots of cash and a choice of card here. Very, very easy alchemize for me personally with the potion belt mostly empty here. This lets us really um, churn through and fill up the potions in general, which is going to be really wonderful. That could even lead into taking Sacred Bark as our boss relic or something fun. Nightmare could duplicate, like, Accuracy or even Masterful Stab, but is going to be pretty expensive barring a Sneko situation. Unload is just damage in a rare. I mean, it does less damage than the Blade Dances even, so we really don't like it very much. Give me an Alchemize. And? Hmm. There's an interesting option. There is that Sacred Bark that I talked about. Doubling the effectiveness of potions. A shockingly... This might be the one of the best tiny houses I've actually ever seen. We benefit from every single aspect of this. Uh, we get a potion, which is helpful right now. We get 50 gold doubled by the membership card to 100 gold. 5 max health, relevant right now. A card reward, which might be even more money with the ceramic fish. And a random upgrade somewhere. Or Fusion Hammer for more energy, which is definitely not bad either. Allowing us to output quite a bit more. Incentivizes us to use Alchemize further. Prevents us from upgrading this Cloak and Dagger, unfortunately. Or from upgrading really much of anything from here on out, which could be a little tricky. There's definitely ways around that. And last but certainly not least, this Sacred Mark makes our potions twice as strong, which could be very good with this Alchemize. Losing out on the upgrades means we can't upgrade this um, Alchemize. There might be other energy upgrades that we're unable to upgrade. So overall, we have a, a less energy efficient deck, but more base energy to, to work with. Very interesting. It's a really tough choice. I genuinely like this tiny house and what it provides. Very rare that I can say that and feel uh, like even vaguely reasonably happy with it. I do like the kind of pathings we're going to end up on if I go fusion hammer though, leaning into our ability to kill elites here. And raking in the money with the membership card and the ceramic fish. Okay, let's go with the hammer. Go with the hammer. After some deliberation, but that's a that's a tough one, truly. Alright, what does our act look like here? It looks like I'm really happy I have a fusion hammer. Although I do wish I'd gotten that meal ticket. 
a little bit. I like triple tapping the elites here. Feels really spicy. We get some time to gear up, up uh, fill up the potion slots. Spend some cash at this store. What about this way? It's going to be three elites no matter what. Yeah, so I think going the, the left side here. Elite farming indeed. Also really wanted to address uh, Out of My Orbit asked about the, the Outer Wilds DLC. I have not finished that and I ultimately think that I'm going to uh, not finish the Outer Wilds DLC, at least not on stream, um, for uh, a number of reasons. I feel personally frustrated with and annoyed by that uh, content, and it is, um, at least numerically speaking, the le the poorest performing content I've I've made in quite a long time. Because even the people who do like it deliberately avoid watching it to avoid spoilers. So it makes it uh, as a as someone who tries to earn a living from the stream, it is um, there's conflict of interest happening, unfortunately. But I do highly recommend Outer Wilds and its DLC. If the premise or anything you see of the game is even remotely interesting to you, I think it's a really cool title. Heck yeah, accuracy, blade dance, turn one. What do you got? Nothing, that's what you got. Yeah, we don't have a kill, unfortunately. That's okay. Talk about damage output. Shell Parasite in two turns is a really good feeling. You know what else is a really good feeling? Getting upgraded cards that are extremely good with your Fusion Hammer. Like this Piercing Whale Plus. Second accuracy also kind of hype here, not gonna lie. But I am going to take the Piercing Whale Plus. Choose one of 20 or heal 13. Got a heal coming up anyway. I'm not going to this shop. We do get three more fights first. Probably I'll still benefit from the heal. Um, but let's look at the cards here. Mostly it's a shame that uh, we won't be able to upgrade the card we add, but I honestly wouldn't mind a third Piercing Whale. Footwork and well-aid plans also look in really nice. Or a third blade dance. Or another piercing well. Okay, so we have uh, many, many good options here. Probably going to be well-aid plans. Real shame we can't upgrade well-aid plans, but just having well-aid plans to hold on to piercing whales or to hold on to a blade dance is very, very, very valuable. Effective 500 money and skip the shop? Yes, because of this shop that we're forced to go to just a few floors later. What about blur? I like blur a lot more after we already have a footwork. But it's definitely not bad here. Visiting two shops is also an option. Remove two cards. Look at more relics to buy. That's a very, very reasonable option. Of course, we get here, we spend all of our money, and there's nothing to do with the next shop. Yeah, even just to remove two strikes, actually, I, I think I do ultimately agree with that. Strike removals is huge for this deck. That's actually a pretty good idea. We have enough money. That's where I wish I'd bought the meal ticket. All right, well, how about kunai? Does anybody think a kunai would be okay here? Anyone at all? Bueller? There's another accuracy as well. There's also the clockwork souvenir giving us an artifact at the start of combat and the boat thingy giving us 10 block at the start of combat. I wish I could afford them all, and as as expected, we aren't going to have any money for the next door now. So it was the blur pick. You know, you're not wrong. It might be the deflect pick. It only costs four gold, after all. Oh, that's true, we do have Odd Mushroom already, so there's a lot less incentive to pick this up against Heart. A lot less incentive. Oh 
All right, well, I'm definitely going to take the kunai. Um, I think I will go with a strike remove. And let's see, we're expected to gain another 45 gold on average. I can reasonably buy this accuracy. But I think I'm just going to leave it here. It's the same we're two gold off of uh, boat thingy. Accuracy is very reasonable. I, I, I just want to have a, a, a bigger gold threshold going into this shop. Being able to afford, say... What I like a lot. Orange pellets would be pretty hype. Um, Slinger Purge would be great. Preserved insect. I mean, we can afford any common relic, uh, which could be a big deal. Ah. This deflect doesn't really change that. But... I think I can... We're going to be getting a few card rewards. I think we can find a good unupgraded card. Maybe even an accuracy. Or something. Uh, let's see here. Guess I'm not even going to play the well-laid plans, huh? This is 28, but this gets me a kunai proc. Let's neutralize, defend, and one of these two cards. Let's all go with the kunai. Zero here. Wish. Okay, a little bit short on a kill. I suppose I'll invest a potion then. This is a threatening amount of damage Go for the draw potion. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. Okay, none of these feel like they fit in with what we're doing. One bit. None of them say block, none of them produce shivs. Lachette's actually kind of decent in terms of the number of hits, but we have no way to scale its damage at the moment. Yeah, our rest is not that much health. Um, we only have 66 max health, so each rest is going to be less than 20 hit points. 18 or so. So I'm more than happy to avoid damage where I can. I just have to play the auto attack last. We miss out on the kunai proc um, prior to playing these block cards and take a little bit of damage. I need to do enough damage to force Mystic to heal here. Or else it'll be my head. A shiv potion. Wonderful news. And already we have begun the blunketing. That is an insane kunai, actually. Four and a half per combat. What? Seven in this combat. And a blessing of the forge to round out 
Full potion belt. Well laid plans. Not too bad. Backflip though, incredibly good. We want a block card and we want more card draw. Backflip is both of those things. Normally I'm not very happy about the base five block that backflip provides, but when we're dexterity scaling this hard, it's pretty good. Lastly, but not leastly, Endless Agony here does help with another kunai proc, but I want the draw. Thank you. Sleeping time. All right, and I think we'll take another combat, too. Let's me cycle out this Ancient Potion for something better. Hey, and we can even relevantly use it in this fight to kill the Fungi Beast first. Good. Or block the Frail, I suppose. Tempted to Forge Potion. A little sketchy. I'm going to. Let's me alchemize for free. Liquid Bronze. That'll be good against uh, Book of Stabbing if we get it. Obtain these two. We do take six here, but that should probably be it for the fight. With no frailty or anything. I guess doesn't matter. I'll do it in this order. Oh yeah, and we have the odd mushrooms, so we actually take less from the fra the uh, vulnerable anyway. Good. Plus, actually not the worst card with a uh, kunai either. But gotta love, uh, gotta love Calculator Gamble in general, letting you discard your whole hand and then draw that many cards. The more cards you have in hand, the better it gets. And it's nine gold. Oh ho, bag of preparation for more cards on turn one. Yes, please. With Clockwork Souvenir, Panic Button would have been really neat, but we can just do Bag of Prep, Card Remove, right? Yes, we can do both of these things, and that will be very, very excellent. Could also consider Ori here, letting us choose and add five cards. Who knows what juicy things lie within. But I think the draw consistency provided by removing a strike and drawing two more cards on turn one is going to be absolutely filthy. And I can't wait to see what we do to these elites now. Ah. Um, blue key? Question mark? Not rare than I. Uh, not often that I skip the eternal feather. But since I already need to rest at rest sites, um, it doesn't feel like it's going to help that much. And with a shiv heavy deck, I think we want to find every relevant relic that we can get. Currently, the feather would be 12 health when we visit rest sites, um, but we're already resting for 18 or so. There's the Book of Stabbing. I will happily use the Liquid Bronze, I suppose. Also very happy to have drawn Accuracy Turn 1. And we can get two Kunai procs, too. This well is perfectly blocking the first turn. Can't get a lot better than that. Piercing Whale perfectly blocking this turn. Let's just see it. Q 
kunai perfectly blocking this turn. But also, like, gamble? No, I'll just hold on to the gamble. I'll block that too. And then the Thorns Potion was completely irrelevant because of how much damage I drew here. But it felt nice, so that's good. We got a Molten Egg! Molten Egg Fusion Hammer. Now we can just add attacks and they'll be upgraded for free. Or what if I just added a second gamble rather than ever having to think about upgrading the first one? That's pretty cool. Or Why would we want to add attacks? Um... Because they give us money? Question mark? I'm sure there's at least one attack I would like to add to this deck. I just don't know what it is right now. Alright. Unfortunately, accuracy is in the draw pile. very tempted to use the skill potion here, because there's a lot of different things we can get from the skill potion that will be useful for me. And it can help shape my turn. The most variable potion, but we're the most in need of just like anything right now, and I can save the other potions for whatever the next elite is. We got? I'm specifically imagining a corpse explosion, but another blade dance will do uh, just fine here. Sure, one more. 12 more damage and another point of dexterity. I think that's enough that we can kill the backslaver even without any other cards here, right? 12 plus 16 plus 16. That's even without the all out attack. Plenty damage. Could have set up the blade dance plus, tried to then draw into accuracy free blade dance. That, that would have been an interesting one. How am I going to get the shivs in my hand in the first place? We'll have to start with Neutralize. And then maybe like a Piercing Whale. Neutralize, Piercing Whale. Then we can Blade Dance, then we can Blade Dance Plus. Make sure the damage is right. Um, yeah. That's what I'm going to choose to do. The incoming six now. I somehow gained four dexterity in that one turn. What? Poor Cloak and Dagger. Wants to be upgraded so bad. Alright, Slaver's Fight went really well. We get a Regal Pillow. Alright, well, happy I took the blue key from the Eternal Feather. And a Choke Plus or an Endless Agony Plus. Here's an example of an attack we might want to take, by the way. Screaming No No, thank you so much for the two, three months. The tier one, two month streak, three months, the one, two, three. Choke could be a heck of a lot of damage, and particularly with well-laid plans, um, could be some serious output. Choke played on the same turn as a Blade Dance is going to be 12 plus 25, so 37 damage, which is less than the Blade Dance and costs more. But if I play other cards, it'll do even more. Choke also notable for removing artifact from enemies, which could really help us against the heart. Bronze Automaton, even. 
Whereas the Endless Agony is going to scale our kunai a lot faster. I'll take the Agony, but... See either of those being good. A hundred gold? You say? I don't mind a hundred gold. Ritual Dagger gets stronger with every enemy kill, then it would be a Ritual Dagger Plus, actually, so it's not a bad Ritual Dagger. Truthfully, but I'll take the 100 gold. Thank you very much. Alright, Book of Stabbing rematch. We proved we don't need help against this nerd. Double block potion, huh? Hey, Hoax, the win streak is indeed still alive. You better believe it. Um, I'm just gonna draw more. Nine plus six. Take one. Like Pearson, well, take none. Oh, and because we discarded our Endless Agonies, we now have two of them coming out. Nice combo there with the Calculator Gamble, essentially. The Gamble, so I can guarantee Blade Dance for a kill. Perfect fight. Patrushka! Two relics out of our next two non-boss chests. A little late. We're only guaranteed one bonus relic from that, but I'll take it. And another Bleed Dance being offered here. I do think that we want one more. Even one more unupgraded. We do want one more. Energy potion? Question mark? Alright, this should be a very easy fight against uh, Bronze Automaton from 66 health. Very, very easy. That is my expectation. Gotta draw a Masterful Stab or... Sender's Bane there. Okay, looks like I'll be using at least a block potion here. I'd like to prevent all the damage if I can. And that allows me to cycle the new potion with the Alchemize anyhow. Incoming damage is a whopping 32. Hurt hand blocks for 12 plus 16 with a block potion. Still takes a bit of damage. Another swift potion. Works for me. The all attack. Actually, no, it won't be one short. It's because it's 11 plus 14. Perfect. Keep the piercing wheel to strip a layer of artifact here. Cloak and dagger. Here's Hyper Babe. We've got Cloak and Dagger, Dash, Defend, which is a really good block. It's not a full block, but it's really good. And we have 
have many more turns to win. Bonk. Not so useless now. Ah! Steady wins the race here. And see that our damage output's not quite where we want it to be. Really want another copy of Accuracy or something similar. Got offered two upgraded rare attack cards here. Glass Knife does 24 damage, or die to die for 17 to everybody. Definitely wouldn't mind a little bit more AoE. That's going to help us in terms of defeating Raptomancer. Or, not worried about Giant Head. Um, but also against the three Darklings fight. Or the three Jawworms fight. I don't think there's going to be a lot of value in bullet time. We're mostly generating enough energy already. And we might be about to get more. Sozu incoming. Oh, <laughs> Dripper. Um, about that Dripper. Very interesting pairing of options here. So we have either the energy choice, Coffee Dripper prevents us from resting at rest sites. That means we can't do anything at rest sites, which is a little bit sketchy, if you ask me. Empty Cage removes two cards, or Ring of the Serpent replaces my bonus turn one draw with one draw per turn. So the question ultimately becomes, which of the two of these? These are both essentially card draw improvers. Empty Cage prevents us from using draws on worthless cards. Whereas the Ring of the Serpent increases our base per turn draw, allowing us to draw through the stinky cards of the deck more quickly. They're both different ways to the same means. Higher base draw is going to make the calculated gambles better, with more cards in hand. Liberty KJ says, don't rest sites force an action before allowing you to leave. If you have no valid actions that you can perform, then there's a continue button that will appear. And that's what we'd have if we took the coffee dripper here. Once we remove these two strikes, what do we start removing? I'd be happy to remove Masterful Stab. And I'd pretty probably be happy with maybe one or two defender moves, especially if I can find another backflip or two to add to this deck. So I don't think we're too likely to oversaturate on removals. I think I think because of the two calculated gambles though, I am gonna opt for the bigger bigger per turn hand size. Plus, this is definitely the more rare of the choices made, I think. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Very rarely do I get a Ring of the Serpent run that I feel good about. Ring of the Serpent means... Means good stuff. Means good stuff. It's no worries for the rest of your days. Might be able to go to two shops here. Let's definitely start at this one, then we can either opt in or opt out of another one, depending on what we find. Do have a slightly weaker turn one, but do we really though? I drew nine cards. 
Drew nine cards on this turn one. Let's defend Cloak and Dagger auto attack. Don't play the thingy. Don't play the thingy. Bonus draw. Kunai also incentivizes us to take the Ring of the Serpent because Kunai naturally leads to longer combats. And the longer a combat goes on, the bigger the advantage becomes from the Ring of the Serpent. I didn't have an empty potion slot and that I liked my current potions. That's the dilemma. Here's a draw card. Acrobatics, draw three, discard one. I think I will take one Acrobatics. Flechette's Plus also a little tempting. If I had, again, any source of strength, I would take it. Killing a Darkling resets their strength. That's right. That's right. Ghost in a Jar is here. And Chaku looking pretty good, giving us energy every time we play 10 attacks, which we do a heck of a lot. That is a very good Nunchaku. Also, the Wombo Combo of Sneko Skull Twisted Funnel. We had any poison at all, this would be where an Envenom would be very good, but I don't have an Envenom. What are the stats on Kunai right now? Currently, an average of one dex per turn. Dex Demon Form. Dodge and Roll, also a very, very good block card with our Dexterity Generation. That's a very good point. It's not going to help with our slowness. Okay, at least Awaken One is super dead. Buy that ghost in a jar. Hopefully we won't need it. a lot of money, right? And that is a lot of money. Coming cursed with two normality. Very good. Z Martin, thank you so much for the two months and the prime sub. It's actually more than 2,000 gold, right? Because we also get uh, 18 gold from ceramic... It, well, 18, yeah, 18 gold from ceramic fish. So 1,008 times 2, 2,016 gold. But it's 2021. So I think this is a little old-fashioned. The much easier and safer choice is find a boss, obtain a rare relic. Could get um, you know tough bandages or tingsha from it but I choose the third option there were a lot of unupgraded cards in this deck and I think that with our draw consistency our very high current health 
and the safety provided by this potion belt that we can upgrade all cards even for the penalty of no longer being able to heal and have a really, really good outcome here. Very notably, upgrading our well-laid plans, upgrading both of these calculated gambles, upgrading the acrobatics, and getting every block card upgraded. Trust me when I say this is going to work pretty well. And now we definitely want to get rid of that last strike. Look at another event. You two? Definitely. Let's show off what the upgraded deck can do. I'll go for the lower health one first. This is a plenty fine hand, so block potion or cunning potion, depending. We're going to block four. Oh, man. Nunchaku going to come in big on this turn. Like, real big. Let's go with the shift potion. I think I need the other one. Another block potion. Wonderful. I can dash defend easy peasy. But I also get to play dance again because of the Shaku value. And I could even die, 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 block potion. Which I think is a good, a good idea here. Damage. Okay, so two potions used so far. That might use more. We shall see. In return, we get 53 times 2 gold, a pocket watch, allowing us to play 3 or fewer cards on our turn to draw more. We get our potion back, and we're offered a Tactician Plus. In a deck with 2 Calculated Gamble Pluses, an Acrobatics Plus, and all that jazz. I'll take that. Now we really want a reflex, if we can find one. And I think I'm going to go to another store here so that I can remove the remaining strike from this deck. Or buy another relic. For those wondering about the second to last relic here, this is Mark of the Bloom. You can no longer heal. Mark of the Bloom prevents us from increasing our current health by any means. New cards will not be upgraded. That was just luck at the previous card reward. So we can still find and add unupgraded cards that we still can't upgrade because of Fusion Hammer. When you take the upgrade all option from Mind Bloom, you only upgrade everything that's currently in your deck. All right, to my great dismay, 50 plus 88 for the card removal is 100. Wait, what is that? Plus 88 is 138. Now we're 126 plus 9 equals 135. So not even with fish are we there. I cannot do trip and remove. Trip is definitely tempting. Being able to apply vulnerable, making our attacks do dramatically more damage. Wasn't I saying it's bad to not be able to do anything at campfires? It's true, but... Getting every card in this deck upgraded, especially the well-laid plans, um, was invaluable. 
Really feeling like I should have just grabbed one of the other accuracies we saw. That's okay. I think that's fine. Not taking an infinite blades. All right, I am still gonna fight elites, even though any damage we take would be permanent. I'm pretty confident we can beat elites without taking any damage. Period. Unfortunately, I played more than three cards. You stinky. That's fine. Dances for next turn. Easy. Get a preserved insect, making future elites have less health and a fruit juice, which unfortunately does nothing. Note that we're at 62 out of 66. We can drink the fruit juice. Telling me I didn't need to upgrade all? We can drink the fruit juice, but our health won't increase. Our max health does, but we cannot heal. So we're still at 62 and we'll be forever stuck there. And his bonus says, yesterday I mentioned that there's a special bonus for playing many cards in one round. That is called a combo. I don't think the bot is gonna be bot has the achievement right, or the score bonus right. Anyway, it's uh, 20 cards. Might be three as well. I'm sure I didn't spell that correctly. All right, we want to fight this elite next, and I will. As long as I have uh, the ghost in jar, I'll be fighting elites probably. Cannot benefit from the heal here. Yes, Sabin. Mark of the Bloom will, will... The quick way to, I think, remember it is that Mark of the Bloom turns off anything that would increase your current health by any amount. It's that simple. Should have thought about using the pocket watch. I think I am going to take one to do the, exactly that draw nine cards next turn. But I can also do quite a bit more damage to the Reptomancer herself. And I have a Gambler's Brew? Okay. I'm scared of what she was going to do. What's the play here? Piercing Whale, Blade Dance, Gamble? I think so. Let's card all of these cards to draw a whole bunch more. Skin piercing whale again. That's a little spooky. You do get energy thanks to Nunchaku. It's nine damage. 
neutralize here, get one energy back, play dash. Only short one block. I'll take one. One is, as they say, none. Okay, we'll get through the Reptomancer fight with no potions used and... Only two health loss. Picking up an Art of War. Giving us energy if we don't play any attacks and a footwork plus to accelerate the dexterity. I really like that. This is actually a very playable grand finale as well. It'll be played if there's no cards in the draw pile, dealing 60 to all enemies. Very potent, but I think a little unnecessary here. Rather add the, uh, the footwork. Hey, bag of marbles, upgrades. Or sorry, just one vulnerable to all enemies at the start of combat and war paint. No! Disaster. 11 gold short of the tough bandages, which would have been all the block in the world. Off double calculated gambles. I think it's still fine. Truthfully. Can remove Masterful Stab here. We could... I mean, the pair doesn't do anything. I think I will take out the Stab here. Perf appreciate not having that for the Time Eater fight. Hey, a Masterful Stab. Okay, rest sites don't do anything, so we should go this way. Churn our potions a little bit. Still in the easy pool, apparently. I realize that. Yuppie Society, what did Donu and Dekka name their pet dog? Spike. One more piercing whale. Currently have two. I would love a third. Yeah, I would love a third. Especially an upgraded one. Three is probably the reasonable maximum. We'll cycle that potion after all. How dare you? I'll show you 30. Gamble all that. Perfect. Hey, Harris and Bergeron. Grants on finally beating Ascension 20 silent. With a sweet Alchemize Sacred Bark Toy Ornithopter deck, of all things. That's cool. Very cool indeed. Dexterity, by the way. Nice. 
against never being attacked next turn, so I can keep up the blade dances. Um, good. Seventeen cards that turn. Strike a flying the arrow backstab. I think we're okay. Last elite is the giant hand. I've been waiting for this man. Bring it. Just bring it. Definitely a fight to keep the. Um, pocket watch in mind against though. Specifically for this turn. Two. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Keep the shiv and the camel. that can be exhausted. So then, don't draw them anymore. We're in really good shape here. Yeah. We got a Juzu bracelet just in time. I'll take a power potion for heart. That actually seems good. And there's the other accuracy we wanted. It's only an accuracy minus, but I don't care. It makes the shivs do more damage. Use the ancient potion. Storm says, of the cards that have persisting effects, which do I think has the most impact per use? Feed. Definitely feed. Max health, so good. Especially when you can get lots of it. It's a nice backup to have. Eh, what do you got? Second Gambler's Brew. Okay, I do feel better about that. Only barely. Another unupgraded card worth adding is a dodge and roll. Gain four block, next turn gain four more block. Benefits from our dexterity two times, essentially. I'll take it. Quick Slash is also, like, almost reasonable. 
have to rest for no benefit. Between taking upgrade all and getting to the boss, we fought three elites and the double orb walkers, taking a total of two damage. How much health will we have going into Act 4? That's the real question. My hope is 61. We'll see. Definitely gotta get rid of these beards. Ooh, that's not gonna be how we start our fight. No. Nope. 24. Well laid plans. Defend, defend is good. Keep calculator gamble and the dodger roll. Time, Vegabon. Thank you so much for 16 months of love and support. Okay, definitely want one Piercing Whale for next turn. Piercing Whale, Survivor. We've also got Dodge and Roll. Okay. Let's start here. I'll use the second Piercing Whale next turn. Realistically. So I don't need to Dodge and Roll. Then what's coming up, I'm going to keep the gamble, not the dodger roll. Play the die to die. Guaranteed to be a times four attack from Awaken One next turn. That's what this piercing well is for. And there's one more just for good measure. Looks like we can cycle the alchemize for now. The longer this fight goes on, the more in our favor it becomes. As our deck scales out of control with the kunai. play the Accuracy Plus as well. Otherwise, I don't think I'm going to be able to do enough damage to win. matters. Playing the Piercing Whale on that turn caused the Awakened One to lose some strength permanently. So known as the Piercing Whale trick.
works on the time meter and on the champ as well, if you play Piercing Whale on a turn where they're purging any debuffs they have. Don't try it on the heart. Well, that went well. Okay, no damage taken to Awaken one. Next up, Donu and Deka, no time meter at all to worry about, which feels good to me. This feels like a pretty good turn to use the speed potion, actually. Um, because I am not quite blocking for enough here. 11, 9, 4 is 23. Although, I guess that's what Blade Dance is for. Never mind, we're full blocking. But I do want to cycle this with the Alchemize, so I guess I will. These two. I'm actually very happy with a fire potion going into Spire Spear and Spire Shield. Not quite a full block, huh? Gamble them. Steady escalation. You do not take a second moss relic, you're missing the starting relic upgrade for the silent. Called the Ring of the Serpent. It replaces your Ring of the Snake and gives you one draw every single turn. And it's real good. At least in this run, it's doing alright for us. Not often a relic I take, but it felt like we were in a really good position to make use of it. And I think that's even more so true now. Whales. Alone and unused. Unwanted. Uninvited. Five, that's three, six. Cannot allow myself to take any damage that's not necessary. down. One point three eight nine per turn now. Here at the end of Act Three. GG. All right, two health lost since taking Mind Bloom to this very moment. Seventy-seven healing prevented though.
Two thumb, two thumb, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these points of dexterity? Okay, we have enough money to get something decent at the store, even if only a card remove or a common relic. Reflex is here. Medical kit is here. Bronze scales are here. So definitely some appealing options. I really do like Medical Kit in this deck in particular, letting us play unplayable status cards to exhaust them. Um, given that the Heart and Spear and Shield fights are probably going to go long, being able to ensure that we don't redraw burns is very, very valuable. So I do like Medical Kit quite a bit. Unfortunately, don't have enough money for Medical Kit and Bronze Scales, but we can do Medical Kit um, Reflex and maybe take the Caltrops too. We just need a little bit more damage for heart, and Keltrops would definitely get us there. Doing 45 damage per multi-hit, the heart does. Very reasonably, 100 damage to heart. So I like Keltrops, Refl Keltrops Reflex card removal. Caesar Roll is worried about the turn 2 spear and shield mega damage. Fair, but don't forget, I have four potions. One of those is a Ghost in a Jar. Actually, I'm going to keep the Fire Potion here. I want to do 20 damage to Spirit War Shield on turn one. Keep the other potions for Heart, and Ghost in a Jar or Gambler's Brew can get me up a tight spot. Depending on what we draw, we might use Pocket Watch, but if we draw a Blade Dance, which is very likely with eight cards on turn one, then I probably won't. Did I buy this in the wrong order? No. Five gold left. Okay. Yeah, this turn, for example, I'm not very likely to allow this to slide. Probably gonna play the die, die, die for the damage. Since I have Piercing Whales, let's aim for killing the Spire Shield quickly. Maybe even turn one quickly. And I think I want to just draw seven new cards with Calculator Gamble here. I could Blade Dance first, but let's just draw seven. Okay, we get basically everything that we need. Light plans, neutralize, removes the artifact so I can Piercing Whale next turn. It really is just beautiful. So I can go Acrobatics and Survivor, huh? Cool. Yeah, get those accuracies down. Okay, I don't think we're going to need anything next turn. from potions. Because this just looks like a beautiful draw. And I love that we got a dexterity potion. Love, love, love that we got a dexterity potion. The second one is long. Nine, yeah. Heart of War is going to go off, so let's just keep. Then try to kill on this turn the Spire Shield, which is a yes. Did somebody say, did we miss Branch? I don't think we did. I 
I don't think we did. If I were to hazard a guess. Do I want it, though? Hmm. Pretty refined deck, actually. The deck is almost entirely upgraded. Random cards added by Branch would be, I think, potentially problematic for us. Dead Branch doesn't usually clog the deck, but this would be a hell of a clog. That said, we might be able to just absolutely devastate Heart with all the generated cards. And I have two upgraded Calculated Gambles. I think this could very easily be easily be an incredibly good Dead Branch, especially with the medical kit. But I definitely don't think we need it, and we'll we'll show off better why the uh, Mark of the Bloom was a good choice if we don't take it here. Let's go without, but I will take the last Piercing Whale. Sorry, Dead Branch, not today, not today. Yes, Power Potion for an After Image. Yes, just a little bit more block. I think our damage is fine with the one Caltrops we do have. Dash, After Image, Energy Potion, Gamble. Caltrops down. No Retain yet. Draw three more. Okay. We have the Ghost and Jar for specifically the big hit I'm picturing, this one. Although, note, we take reduced damage when vulnerable here. I think this is probably it. Uh, and I can even use the Pocket Watch here. Go defend. Wound, die, die, die. Draw lots of cards next turn. Okay, let's do that. Thank you, Ghost. Could also have gambled there. But that might be something I want to do here. I think I need to take a little bit of damage to the Beat of Death on this turn. Like, I could I could open Backflip, but it's better to, like, burn Accuracy and Blade Dance first. Well, hold on. Um, actually, wait. There's one block per card. Draw that defense, huh? So I could Gambler's Brew. I don't think that this is the turn, too. I think we're just going to accept that we take some damage this turn. And everything is going to be fine. Ow. For some definitions of fine. Just be glad we don't have Masterful Stab anymore. And from here, we're going to be in just really good shape. Almost assuredly. Not artifact. 
back to bust through. One shoot for that. Totally fine though. Get him. Casual 19 points of dexterity here. GG. Mr. Hart. GG, everybody. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.